One of the uses of a curvifix is in the dysmorphic posterior pelvic ring where you want upper sacral segment fixation. Another potential application in my hands is the use of a curvifix device in the upper sacral segment for patients who have fragility fractures or sacral insufficiency fractures of the posterior pelvic ring. In the poor quality bone, the curvifix screw, particularly as it undulates through the posterior pelvic ring, provides tremendous stability. In addition, by having a large diameter screw in the back of the pelvis, holding that insufficiency fracture or insufficiency fractures, I can allow for early weight bearing as it confers good stability in, a, in poor bone quality. In this scenario, we'll be putting a screw in the back of the pelvic ring in a non-dysmorphic pelvis. We'll be doing this transsacral, transiliac. One of the features that we'll be utilizing here is the drill tip wire to get through the far side of the cortical bone. This is particularly important in patients who have good quality bone or a high energy pelvic ring where the bone quality does not allow for simply using the ball tip guide wire and malleting it across. In this scenario, we'll use the drill tip so that we can drill a hole and then put our ball tip back in to help navigate through hard bone. We'll start with our outlet view that you see here. I'll mark my lines. Can I get a marking pen, please? Thank you. So I'll mark my line for my outlet view. Okay. On the outlet view, this is cranial. This is caudal. All right, can you go to the other view, please? Sure. Shoot that when you're ready. Great. This is my inlet view, and I'm going to mark that as well in terms of directionality. This is anterior. This is posterior. Okay, great. I'm going to give that back to you. I'm going to go ahead and push in in the posterior superior quadrant. Shoot that. That's two posterior, so I'm going to start a little more anterior. Sometimes I'll do this with a 1.6 millimeter Kirchner, Kirchner wire to localize and then go in with the larger diameter wire. Shoot that. I like that starting point. Can you go to the other view, please? And I like that starting point. I'll take a multi, I'll take the mallet, please. Shoot that. Excellent. It's a down trending wire. Not ideal if I was doing a trans sacral trans iliac screw utilizing traditional fixation, but with the curvifix, a down trending wire is not a big deal because I can easily navigate around it or around the tunnel, I should say. Good hard bone here, so it'll be a good use of our drill tip wire. That's heading right to the tunnel, and even that, even with the curvifix, that does make me a little anxious, so I'm gonna redirect that in a second. Can I see the knife, please? Okay, good. All right, I'll take the triple sleeve, please. Great, thank you. Push through this. The triple sleeve, particularly the trocar, allows me to get through the soft tissue. I'll take the wire driver. Yep, I'm going to redirect this wire a little bit. Shoot that. Shoot that. Shoot that. Shot. I like that a little better. Other view, please. Make sure I'm not going uh, somewhere where I shouldn't be on the outlet view. Yeah, that'll work. Shot. Ooh, okay. Great. All right, I'll take uh, I'll take the pins, please, so I can pin this in place. Thank you. Again, one of the features of the new system is the trocar that can be pinned into the bone, so you can be hands free once you find your starting point. Okay, good. All right. That can come out. I'll take the reamer. Remember the reamer has 
a notch on it to just determine when and how deep you need to go with it. Shoot that. Hard SI bone there. Shoot that. Can you go to the other view, please? Okay, and I'm there, you can see me. Shoot that, excellent. Shot, and you can see that I'm down with my notch in the pelvis. Shot, there it is. Great. All right, excellent. And now I'll take my bolt tip, yep. That goes in the corridor that I just drilled. Good, shoot that, and that's protected, thank you. I'll take my bolt tip now, and I'll insert that, shoot that. Nice safe wire above my tunnel. You can see I'm just above my S1 there. I'll take the T handle and a mallet to follow. Okay, thank you. Shoot that. So I wanna be careful getting around there, shoot that. Okay, I'm gonna go straight now, shoot that. Great, thank you. Other view, please. That's too posterior, so I'm gonna rotate that so it's gonna go anterior, shoot that, shoot that. There we go. Shot, good. You can see the S1 tunnel there. I'm above the S1 tunnel on the far side. And I'm safe there as well, so I'll tap that in a little bit more. Shot, great. And now I'm gonna rotate that, shoot that. Shoot that. Shot, and now I'm kind of stuck there. The, I'm at the SI joint. The wire doesn't want to pass any further because it's a hard stop and a good quality bone. Can you go, go to the other view, please? And so in this case, I'll use the drill, the drill wire. The drill wire will allow me to drill through hard bone, and then I can put my ball tip guide wire back in and navigate through that hard bone. Okay, so I'm there. So I'm gonna take this. So, so this is gonna take a few more steps. I'm gonna put this in and ream up to my ball tip. Take this out. Great, and I'll take this. And I'll put this in. I can really do this. Get in the hole, okay. There we go. And I'll ream this. Shot, great. Around the S1 tunnel, shot, great, we're up to that ball tip. Now, I'm gonna hold this in, I'm gonna remove my drill, I'm gonna put my exchange tube in. Can I go through this with my exchange tube? Yeah, great. The exchange tube will go through the middle cannula. It's the white exchange tube that allows for the drill tip wire. And shoot that, I've seated my exchange tube, now I'm gonna remove my ball tip guide wire which I'll put back in a little bit. And now you can see the drill tip wire that I'm gonna use. The drill tip wire will allow me to get through that cortical bone, and then I can reapply my ball tip guide wire. Drill tip wire is in, shoot that. You can see the drill tip there. Other view, please. I'll take the wire driver, please. Because in good quality bone, if you try and mallet the ball tip guide wire through, there's a likelihood chance that you'll bend the ball tip guide wire because it is flexible. And even in, hard, in some hard bone, it may not be sharp enough, strong enough to violate or get through that cortex. You can see the drill tip wire there. Shoot that, you can see now I am going through the SI joint, shoot that. And I'm going through that now medial wall of the iliac wing, shoot that, and now I'm Shoot that, shoot that, and now I'm right up against the lateral wall there. I have two options. One is I can go through the lateral wall here. Um, if I do that, then I can seat my screw quad cortically, 
Um, if I leave this right here, then I'll still have to get my ball tip through, but now it's a thinner wall and not multiple cortices that my ball tip has to go through. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and drill all the way through so my ball tip doesn't take any chances of bending or breaking. Shoot that, and now I'm through that lateral wall. You can see it right there. I'm gonna leave my ball tip in, my drill tip in. I'm gonna take this out, and now I can ream over this wire. If I needed to go in again, or I needed to direct the wire, maybe I'm in the front of the pelvic ring and I'm trying to drive my wire, I'm trying to drive my wire across, uh, it's a, the consideration is to use the drill tip create a hole and then go back in with your ball tip and so you can go back and forth and really get very creative and very accurate with your ball tip guide wire placement, particularly in good solid bone. So I'm gonna finish reaming, shoot that. And you can see now I'm through that hard bone and there's no way that my ball tip guide wire would have gone through the pelvis without using the drill tip wire, not in this quality bone. We're using an obturator here to prevent the ball tip guide wire, or in this case, I'm sorry, the drill tip guide wire from coming out. The obturator allows force to be held without having to use your hands to do it. And the drill will pass over it. Okay, so shoot that. So that's measuring a 140 on the dot. So we'll use a 140 millimeter screw because I know that I need to get through the far cortex. And I'll take that with a washer. I did. Thank you. We still have to exchange the drill tip out, so I'm gonna put this in, pass this all the way across, shoot that, confirm that it is across, pull out the drill tip wire, put in our exchange wire. Once the exchange wire is in, the washer will not go through the obturator. And then I'll take that, can I get a wire driver please? Take these wires out as well while I'm here. You can see this is the larger version of the washer, uh, allows for larger surface area for compression. Thank you. Got that, I'll give that back to you together. Great, I'll give this to you, take that, thank you. Screw goes in. 9.5 screw. And again, I think the posterior screw diameter is really a function of you know, what, your, what your soft tissue, what your um, upper sacral segment anatomy looks like, how much bone you have there, um, how much space you have, and your comfort level. I, I, especially in osteoporotic bone, I prefer to use a larger diameter screw if there's uh, space for it, because I think it provides a tremendous amount of stability. Push in a little bit. You can see I've got really good control and fixation of that. Give me a 20 degree rollover, please. So here we can see hopefully the screw and the washer flush to the lateral cortex, AP. Oh. And there you can see the washer is flush, getting compression, and you can feel the resistance in that, and that feels great. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and lock the screw now. So I'll remove this, I'll remove this. I'll use my uh, locking guide, and I need the counter. Yep counter goes on. You'll see the red there. We're going to go red to green. You feel a click, screw's locked. Unscrew it, and then that releases, and go ahead and give me an AP pelvis when you're ready. There you go, thank you. Oh, and push in a little bit, yeah. Great. You'll see there's your 9.5 millimeter screw across the back of the posterior pelvic ring, the upper sacral segment, safely going around the corridors uh, and providing quad cortical fixation of the posterior pelvic ring.